everyone. Welcome to the branches. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, and uh, I just want to welcome you all here this morning. It is a beautiful morning out there. Uh, how's everybody's March Madness brackets doing? Probably pretty bad. Uh, is now a bad time to say that I'm an IU fan? Oh, yeah, it might have been. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm, so I, I, wanted, I wanted you all to get to know me. I figured that's what I'd tell you today. But anyway, we're all glad to have you here. Uh, if you can, please fill out a connection card uh, as well. Uh, if you have any prayer requests or um, you would like to give to our church, we've got a black box in the back. When you're on your way out today, you can drop all of that in there. Uh, we would be happy to pray for you, uh, as well as those offerings help us to serve the community. So we're glad to, uh, that you're willing to give and be a part of our church. Uh, Easter is coming up. I'm sure all of you know that. Uh, but before Easter, of course, in two weeks, we have Palm Sunday, or as we like to say around here, Donkey Sunday. So we're going to have a donkey out front. Make sure to get here early so that you can get a chance to get some pictures, uh, maybe get a chance to pet it, meet it, have fun. I don't know. It'll be cool. Donkeys. Uh, and then, of course, the week after that is Easter. And uh, we still have a few bags of empty Easter eggs out front that we need to uh, get filled with candy. Uh, so if you feel uh, called to take one of those bags, fill it with candy, and then bring it back next Sunday, we can use it in our big Easter egg hunt or scramble, as I've been told, uh, on uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, as well, we also need a lot of volunteers still that day. So uh, if uh, you are willing to volunteer, feel free to sign up. We have a sign-up sheet, sign sheet out front uh, if you would like to help. Uh, we need people for ushering, uh, coffee, uh, as well as uh, just uh, bringing people in uh, and set up as well. Uh, speaking of setup for Easter, we are actually going to set up the night before, uh, so uh, I believe that's April 8th. Uh, we're going to be here uh, to set everything up. Uh, we're going to have two services on Easter morning at 8 and 10. Uh, so when we set everything up the night before, if you would like to come out and help, we could definitely use it. And there will be pizza, so feel free to join us with that. Uh, other than that, um, I think uh, we're just happy to have you here today. Uh, like I said, it's a beautiful day out, even though it's cold. That cold is coming to an end, uh, and we are all going to be here to worship this morning. So uh, let me pray for us, and then we will get going. Lord, we're so glad to be here this morning. We're so glad to be in your presence, uh, and we can feel you in this room, Lord. Uh, you have uh, given us this time that we can specifically stand here and worship you, Lord, knowing that uh, we can be a part of your kingdom. So, Lord, as we worship today, open our hearts to what you have for us. Open our minds to what Alex is going to preach to us, uh, and just help us to help us to be here for you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done in our lives, Lord. Bless us this day. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. If you all stand up, we'll get started worshiping. Uh, tell someone around you hello and that Jesus loves them. Thanks, everyone. Let's get going. Is all been paid. 
Because you stand in victory Because you crush the enemy I can get up off the floor This is my resurrection day Nothing's gonna hold me in the pain This is my resurrection day Nothing's gonna hold me down Say goodbye to my yesterdays Ever since I met you I have changed This is my resurrection day Nothing's gonna hold me down The good news is the good news Cause you chose the rock and cross The good news is the good news Your gospel is the power that is saving all of us So I can get up off the floor Come on, get up off the floor This is my resurrection day Nothing's gonna hold me in the grave This is my resurrection day Nothing's gonna hold me down Say goodbye to my yesterdays Ever since I met you, I am changed This is my Resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me down. This is my resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me in the day. This is my resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me down. Say goodbye to my yesterdays, ever since I met you, I have changed. This is my resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me down. Oh, 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 oh. Resurrection Day is coming. That's a great thing. And uh, I'm really excited about worshiping that day. I love Resurrection Day is my favorite day of the year. All because of what Christ did on the cross, right? So much so that I, one of my favorite scriptures is in 2 Samuel 6. That's when King David, King David is so excited to worship God. He is he starts dancing in his priestly underwear. And he's going out in the streets, dancing and worshiping God in his priestly underwear. People are like, oh my goodness, how undignified. And he says to them, he says, you know what? I will be even more undignified than this because I want to praise my God. Now, I'm not saying we strip down in your underwear. That, that's not literal, okay? We don't want to do that. But figuratively, we want to be so undignified that we praise, that we don't even care what's going on beside us. We want to worship as a community, but let's not that hold us back. Let's be undignified in worshiping our God and praise his name so everybody knows that we are a believer. I walk a bit different now, now that my heart's been found. Nothing really feels the same. I hold my head a bit higher, I lift my voice a bit louder. Yeah, something inside has changed. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. Cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier, cause I've been redeemed. I am a believer. I know this is not my home, I know I don't walk alone. No matter what comes my way I have peace through the trouble I have joy through the struggle Now my hope's in a bright day I am a mountain river Water walker More than just an overcomer I've been set free I am a gospel preacher Heart on fire Freedom Yes, 
First Peter 1 Peter 1.3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.
But I've nothing else fit for a king in your heart. It's our poor heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving what you have. All that you gave on the cross, taking away all our sins. Lord, it just seems like it's not enough to give you our hearts. But that's all that you want. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for leading up to Resurrection Day. An empty tomb. The victory that you won. So we can enter your throne, Lord. So we can have a close relationship with our Abba Father. Lord, thank you again. Just... We praise you. We lift our hands. We lift our hearts. We lift our minds. Lord, everything we do in this life, everything is to honor you and lift up your kingdom. Lord, I ask now that we hunger, starve after your spirit, starve after your word, and hunger after what you want for us in this life is to love you and love others. Lord, I ask that you be with Pastor Alex as he delivers your message. Bring his spirit upon his shoulders. And Lord, I just thank you so much for this community of believers, this community that wants to seek you, Father, to seek your son. And it's in your son's precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Good morning. Welcome to The Branches. My name is Alex Hershey. I am the pastor here at The Branches. And uh, yeah, that was a St. Patrick's Day thing there. That was last, was that Friday? That was the only thing that happened on Friday in Indiana. So we don't need to talk about anything else that's happened in Indiana on Friday last week. So anyway, all right. All right. Hey, so glad that you're here. It is. Can you believe it? We are moving through the season in the church calendar called Lent. And it's a season of preparation. Uh, man, I just got winded for moving two chairs. Maybe I should spend more time in the gym than just on Sunday morning. Anyway, just wait a second. All right, here we go. Okay. Anyway, but we are in the season of Lent. That is really a season of preparing our hearts for Easter. Uh, the church fathers and mothers truly wanted us to have a season, just like there's the season of Advent. Uh, this is the season where we want to be able to hear from Jesus in this time. And so we as a church have been focusing on the simple word of hunger. What are we hungering for? What is the hunger in our lives? What is it that the pursuit has been? And, and this is the thing, like, like sometimes, we, I mean, we, we should be convicted at times. But I, I'm convicted by it, like what, what I should be doing for in the eyes of God at times. But this is the reality, is that we've all hungered after many different things. And, and we've done it early on in life, right? You know, I mean, this isn't something that it was, it's just when we have to worry about it as adults, but, but it's true. And so we get to have this season where we're evaluating what we have hungered for before, what we might be hungering after right now, but what we should be hungering after with God. 
And that's a good thing. We need these seasons to begin to center ourselves upon Jesus. To understand the power of the resurrection. It's not just a story about Jesus. It's the story that Jesus has for you. That you can be resurrected. That your sin and shame, that the mistake of what you've hungered after in the past, doesn't have to be what defines you forever. I love this season. This is a great, great season. And it's been so awesome that you guys have been coming and uh, very partaking, or becoming and being present here. Uh, if uh, this is your first or your second time at the branches, we hope you feel welcomed and loved. Uh, that you can jump in understanding what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does that look like? How can I live differently in a world that doesn't seem to always be loving the way that I've heard Jesus can love? And so that's what we're here for. That's what we're about. Our mission here is simple, to connect to God, grow in Christ, and to love others. We truly believe that if we go deeper with Jesus, then we can live out our name, which is branching out with love. As we go deeper with Jesus, we can only branch out to love others in Jesus. All right, so no matter where you've been in this last week, no matter what you've gone through, the highs and the lows, the valleys, the mountaintops, and the in-betweens, Jesus wants to encounter you right now. Whatever busyness that you have on your mind, Jesus is saying, I've got it. Whatever you think that you're inadequate about, Jesus is saying, I've got it. Whatever joys that you are experiencing right now, and there are joys because spring break for some is happening right now. Others, you're waiting for it. It's coming. There are joys. Jesus is there. Let me celebrate with you. So let us pray right now. Prepare our hearts to hear from his word. God, we thank you so much for the grace and the peace that you have for us. We pray right now that in the midst of this season, Lord, that we can center our lives on being hunger, hungry after you. And so open our ears to hear from you. Let my words be yours. And let us leave this place not just saying, well, I went to make so-and-so happy or I don't know why I showed up today, but instead just being able to say, Lord, somehow you've broken into my soul. And I'm forever grateful for that. So we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Have you ever had, uh, have you ever been sitting in a room with a group of people and you start coming up with a plan, right? Like, what if we went and did this, right? Maybe you're thinking about, at least when I think of this, I think about my younger days, right? When I'm sitting in a room with uh, friends and we're just, we're playing Goldeneye and we're just like, what should we do with the day, you know? And you come up with a plan, you might end up someplace, you know, and do something. Usually you just ate Taco Bell. That's usually what these plans come to. But you've never had that, where a plan eventually just falls into place and you go. And I love these moments in, in, in my life where a plan actually comes together. And there was this time, uh, especially now that we're in spring break, there was this moment in my sophomore year of college uh, where we were sitting at the cafeteria table and uh, just sitting there hanging out like maybe, maybe two days before spring break was happening. And we're just sitting there and like we had no plans. We didn't need to have plans. We were, there was no reason to have plans. We didn't have any plans, and so we were just like sitting there. But then all of a sudden, my friend Daryl, he comes in and he sits down and he's like, I really miss my family. I'm like, oh, why don't you go see him? And he's like, don't have a ride. I'm like, oh, where are you from? Buffalo, New York. I'm like, I've always wanted to go to Buffalo in the beginning of March. It sounds beautiful in Buffalo, New York in the beginning of March. And so, like, all of a sudden, like, there's a group of us who are like, let's go to Buffalo. We've always shuffled off to Buffalo. And so we were, like, getting all excited. And so all of a sudden, there was this plan that started to form. And then we started walking down the halls of our dorms, like, who wants to go to Buffalo, New York? You know, it's spring break. We've got to head north, not south. That's boring. Why would you want to go to beaches? I'm sure there's beaches in Buffalo. And so we started gathering people. And so much so that I remember I called my parents and I said, hey, I need the van. I need the van. And so, like, on, and, and it was in this moment as I was writing this that as I was reflecting, I probably could have said more things like to this to my parents. And maybe I shouldn't be saying this to our, with our youth here, but, like, and I think my parents would have been like, 
yeah, go for it. Let's see what happens, you know. But anyway, my parents were like, you can have the van. And so, like, we did the van exchange, and it was all great, you know. And we were ready. And by that next meal, that next night, we were all pumped to go to Buffalo, New York. Eric said, like, Eric, he, you guys all remember Eric. Anyway, and Eric was like, we can stay at my grandma's in Rochester. And we're like, perfect in Rochester. He's like, and Rochester's close to Canada. I'm like, we keep going north for spring break. This is genius. We're the smartest college students ever. We're like, where's the MTV beach house in Rochester? Anyway, and so we had this whole thing mapped out where we were like, let's go to Niagara Falls. We'll end up in Toronto. What's in Toronto? Canada. Anyway, and so we're good. And so we jump into this plan full force, and we are all ready to go, and it is awesome. And then we're like, okay, we're going to meet on this day. We're going to head out. And then Daryl is like, hey, guys, guess what? I got a ride earlier than when you guys are leaving. And we're like, okay. Well, we'll wave at you as we pass on by to Rochester. And so anyway, and so we still go because we already made plans, right? So we didn't care. So things get mixed up sometimes. So anyway, I love it when a plan comes together. What do you think of when I say that? This is what I think of. Come on. Here you go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I love it when a plan comes together. Am I dating myself? All right. No, it's true. All right, but it's true. I love it when plans come together. You might be asking yourselves right now, how is he going to tie this into a sermon? Well, let's find out. All right, and maybe nothing to do with the A team, but a lot to do with Mr. T. I'm just joking. No Mr. T today. Anyway, but if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open to the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. And I believe that this is where we begin to see Jesus is finally saying, I'm going to put a plan together. I'm going to gather people, and we are going to go for it. And here in this, we begin to see this. So if you have your Bibles, open them up to the Gospel of Mark chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 16 through 19. And it's this abbreviated version of the Gospels of Jesus beginning to call the disciples to come and follow him. So here we go. It says this. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he says, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther, he said, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets, he saw them. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the beginning of the journey of Jesus. This is the beginning of Jesus calling the disciples, and they say that it was a three-year journey that Jesus had with these disciples, and these are the first four that we see that he calls out, and we know that there are actually how many disciples? Just shout it out. Twelve. There you go. We'll work on that. No, anyway, but no, there's 12 disciples. And so we're seeing that he's in this process of gathering the team together, sitting around the cafeteria table saying, who wants to go on this journey with me? And he starts calling people out. And we see the stories in the Bible of the people who say, yes, I will follow. And it's sort of amazing how they follow. It's, it's this mighty thing that it's sort of this magnetic thing that Jesus has, right? He says, come and follow. And the way that the gospel writers say it, it's like they drop their nets. They literally drop what they're doing, and they follow Jesus, right? They just follow. It's a powerful thing, and he simply says, Come and follow me, and I will, make you how, I will show you how to fish for people. And these are the people that they, they begin to follow this. They follow, and they understand. They begin to want to understand what Jesus is about. And I, I, I think this passage is just one of those moments where we begin to see how Jesus knows that he wants to gather people together. That Jesus knows that he wants them to come and to be, under, be able to understand what does it mean to be a follower of God and what does it mean to be someone who can do life with others in a healthy way. I, I also think that in this moment, we begin to see the idea of a call upon our lives too. It's not just the call on the disciples, but it's a call upon our lives. It's Jesus saying, for those of you who are seeking purpose, and understanding in this life. For those of you who are wanting calling in your life, this is something that we should lean into and try to understand. And this is the reality. All of us have been searching and wanting that. What is my purpose? 
And the thing is, is that some of us, we're a certain age now where we could say, nope, I've already figured that out. But we know, because we've lived life for a long time, or longer than others, that we still are curious and wondering, what is my purpose right now? We've moved on from it's just a job. We've moved on that it's not just the right relationship to be on. But what is my purpose? Why am I here? What is the calling upon my life? It has to be more than just selling this product, or it has to be more than just making these contacts or teaching or what. There has to be something more. And in this moment, I don't believe that, I don't believe Jesus was necessarily calling these disciples out and saying, okay, now, this is your, your plan for full-time ministry. I'm calling myself out a little bit of this. I don't think he's saying that to these guys. He's not saying, okay, so you've got to go to school here. Then you've got to go to more school, because that makes sense. And then you've got to make sure you get your background check, and you've got to make sure that you can recite. All. He's not saying this to them. He's just saying, I'm not telling you to stop being a fisherman. I'm just saying you come and you follow me. You're not going to forget instantly how to go fishing. And we see later, you're not going to instantly forget how to do math. You're not going to instantly not going to stop being a businessman. He's not saying this to the disciples. He's saying you're going to continue to use those skills, but your primary focus will now be on following Jesus. When he's giving the purpose to the 12, we can't just sit here and cross our arms and say, well, I'm proud that they're going to go be missionaries. That's good. I'll write him a check. That'll be great. That's not what he's saying to him. He's taking ordinary people and he's helping them see their purpose and their call. And in their ordinariness, they're able to follow with a skill set of not just following Jesus, but doing life. So this is something that I think is so amazing. So amazing about the story of Jesus calling out the 12. It's something that at some point, all of us can relate to. The moment we were doing one thing, and then Jesus says, come and follow. Come and follow. The beauty of this is that when we, when we learn to follow, when we choose to follow, we begin to see our purpose and our call. Oz Guinness, he wrote a classic book that was all about the call from God. He says this, we are not primarily called to do something or go somewhere. We are called to someone. We are not called first to exceptional work, but to God. The key to answering the call is to be devoted to no one and nothing above God himself. <laughs> when we are called, when the disciples were called, and when we are called, we are called simply to follow Jesus, to simply say yes to the call in our lives. And as we look at this passage a little bit, we begin to see that there's this, this response from the disciples I was just looking at this, and there's this response of their hearts being prepared to, to, to not just say, okay, whatever, but they have a response. And, and the there's two things I want to look at. The first is just their response is one of humility and following. This is knowing that the call isn't about what you want, but rather what God wants in your life. It is, it is easy, in my opinion, to say, this is what I want in my life. Now, we all know that we've all tried that, and it can be a lot harder to say, this is what I actually want. I want this kind of job. I want to do this. By this time of my life, I'll be married, and I'll have this many kids, and we'll all be living really happy, and I'll have this many cars. We know it's easy at the beginning of the game of life to just pick up a card and be like, I guess I'll go this way with my life, right? But then we get into the game of life, and there are decisions to be made. You were expecting one child, and hey, there's twins or triplets, whatever. The little markers you put in your car, it's crazy. Anyway, but that's the reality of it, right? 
And we can easily say, this is what I want my call to be. I want my purpose to be. And it can trip us up time and time and time and time again. We put too much pressure on ourselves. In this moment, when we begin to realize that our call is simply to seek God, to follow God, there is a freeness to that. And we have to have a humility when we, uh, when we come to that. When our humility, we begin to understand that God is calling us to live a life that is, is helping us to have our purpose be on Him. When, our shift, when we shift our purpose to God and what God wants from us, we can then take this, this form of humility in our lives that opens us up to see what is primary. What is primary in the eyes of God? And it helps us to have a peace in our lives. The next thing is just humility and then self-sacrifice, right? So there's some similarities, but it's a bit different. This is what we find with the disciples. Jesus calls them and they just simply lay down their nets, and they go. They don't ask questions, right? I think we are very good. We've been taught to be critical thinkers, which is very important. We are very good, though, to be able to be reasonable people, right? I had a pastor that I worked with time and time again, and he always would say, faithfulness and foolishness are a thin line, and he's right. And so we want to ask questions before we walk through a door, but when I fall, when I read this passage, there was no hesitation. Jesus says, follow, they follow. But often I believe that God has asked us to follow and was like, well, 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 well. Well, if this happens and this happens and this happens, then I will do what you ask, right? I'll go for it. But self-sacrifice is something that is, is something that is, is so important. Now, I've been watching some of this, uh, this little tournament that they have every, every year. Uh, still processing all of the loss that has happened through this tournament. But anyway, it's always fun to watch, and, and I, 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 hopefully I watch more than a few games. And, and anyways, I'm watching, and I think it's interesting how athletes talk about sacrifice, right? And, and, and I love that. I, I am a big sports fan, so I'm not trying to knock anything. But I always they talk about, oh, all those times in the gym, you know. They could have been out playing with their friends, but instead they chose to come to the gym. And they're like, oh, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And, and they did. I'm not joking. They probably did. There's probably a good sacrifice that they had. But their sacrifice was for wanting something in return, right? Their sacrifice was that I will get personal victories. I, we saw some sacrifice. I, if, if I get noticed, I'll get in the transfer portal. I'll end up playing for other schools or I'll get drafted or whatever it may be. Their, their sacrifice was for individual gain. There is no individual gain when the disciples chose to have self-sacrifice with Jesus. They just followed. Sometimes we've watered down this idea of sacrifice because we want something in return. If I sacrifice and if I do this. Now, I've watched it in the years of this church. I've watched individuals give sacrifice because they have a gift that God can use in any capacity in this church. I watch it every Sunday morning as people come in and they sacrifice. They don't get to make up sleep later. They don't get to, to, to lead small groups at different times. You know what I mean? They, they, it's a sacrifice to just follow Jesus. I see heroes every Sunday morning that make this happen. And my heart is warmed. But there's this idea when we follow Jesus of humility and self-sacrifice that allows for us to then see our call and our purpose. When our faith becomes more than just self-focused, it lives. When our faith is one that is not just able to just stop at the moment of following, it thrives. Because this is the thing. It's a two question, right? When we look at it in the Bible, it says, come and follow me. And he doesn't just put a period, right? And again, I don't want you to be hearing that this is just for the 12 elite disciples. This is not it. This is for everybody. He doesn't say just follow me, period. He then says, and I will show you how there will be fishers of men. People. This is the thing that I've also learned in my life, is that when you follow Jesus, when you encounter Christ, 
you often can't shut up about it. That's a good thing, right? Have you ever been around someone who has just encountered Jesus for the first time? They talk all the time. I love it. When I was in Cuba uh, uh, just a, a month ago or so, uh, we were visiting all these different sites and all these different church sites, like all these church sites. I didn't see a beach in Cuba, and that was great. I saw the church on fire. And so uh, we were going to all these places, and we were up on the fifth floor of this Kami commune. Uh, it's a, anyway, no, it was a, it was a apartment, any Kami condo or whatever. They were just run down, all this stuff. And there's this woman in there, and she was starting a mission. And the mission was hopefully to gather 35 people so they could start a church, but they were just starting this mission. And she is just smiling to, uh, from ear to ear, and the pastor is there and says, she is giving us this place so that uh, people can gather here. There's not a church in this community. So people can gather here and learn about Jesus, right? They just started. They haven't started that long. And this woman's just smiling ear to ear. And uh, I've never heard this term used in any other way except for what it is, which is a widow and, uh, you know, someone who's lost their, their, their husband. And, but, but they reference that she is a widow because of the woman who gave everything she had for the kingdom of God. And they kept calling her that. I'm like, and she's just smiling ear to ear, like, woohoo, you know, like, oh my goodness. And, and, and then what was so amazing in this moment is that the excitement was, was that as we were standing in this group and we're huddled in this small little apartment, they, said, they point to this woman in a striped, beautiful dress, and, the, and she is just smiling even more. And they said she actually became a Christian last week. The fruit was already present. Lord, I will follow you. I will give you everything I have. And then the fruit was right there. And this woman just in the radiant of being just new to Jesus was just glowing. When you follow Jesus, you have to share. You have to share. Our faith is more than just about us. Our faith is the call that gives us a purpose to go and to share Jesus with everyone around us. This is awesome, right? This is awesome. I mean, how many of you in the last month has told someone about a show to watch on Netflix or something, right? We, we all know how to share. We all do. Hey, you just go to this restaurant. Yep, have you listened to this band? Yep, yep, yep. And then it, have you followed this new sports team? Like, oh my gosh, we love to do it. Have you gone, you know, we, we tell people everything about it. Uh, this. But the thing that changes our souls is Jesus. The thing that can change other souls is Jesus. That magnetic personality, the magnetic way that Jesus said, come and follow me. Yeah, people did. But the reality is, is that it's the stories of how Jesus intersects our lives that causes people to say, I want to follow. So we are in an awesome season right now. We are in an awesome season where we are getting closer to Easter. This is a time where we can invite people into a community of faith, can invite people into saying yes to following Jesus. It has been an amazing year here at the branches already, and we're already halfway through March. God is moving and doing great things. People are excited to receive an invitation. The invitation of more than, bigger than just coming to church, but the invitation of life transformation. It's awesome. There's a lot of Daryls out there just saying, I just want to go home, right? I just want my father to embrace me. And there's a lot of people just sitting around the cafeteria table saying, well, good luck with that. But I believe that there's a room full of people in here saying, well, I want to help you with that. I want you to feel the embrace of the Father. So just really quick, this is the this four steps that I think we have to do. We have to discover. We have to discover the truth of Jesus, that he is our Savior. We have to discover that for ourselves. Two, then we have to discern whom, who is Jesus wanting us to bring around the table to share our faith with. Then three, we have to pray for those people. We have to pray for them. We have to discover. We have to discern. We have to pray. And then we simply have to go. 
When we do those first three things, the going becomes a lot easier. Sometimes we try to get the cart before the horse, right? And we just go. Those are typically the people that just have blow horns and they just are mean. Jesus was never mean. But when we do those things, when we discover the genuineness of who Christ is, when we discern who Christ has laid upon our hearts, when we've prayed over those people, and when we have been able to just have the power to go, lives change. And so, on your chairs right now, you received uh, two pieces of paper. I haven't done this in a long, long time. I haven't done this in a long time. There's two little pieces of paper and a pen. You might have to share pens, whatever. It's okay. Uh, that's good. So hold your paper up. So you have two little pieces of paper. Here we go. Here it is. You have these? I want you to write on both of these the same names. One to three names, okay? So I want you to write one on this one, or one of all three of them on this one, and all three on this one. So it's pretty easy. Same names on both. And what you're going to do is one of them you will keep. You'll just put it right into your pocket after you write your names on it. And what I want you to do is write names on who you would love to have sitting next to you on Easter Sunday. Now, if they're sitting next to you now, check mark. You've already done it. Good job. Proud of you. But people who aren't sitting next to you right now, write their names on it and just put them on their pocket. The other one, I want you to write their names on, and as we come up for communion in a little bit, I want you just to place it on the chair. And what I want from this is simply this. You will pray for these three names, and then I will promise to pray over all of these names every day as well. So that means there'll be at least two people, you and me, praying for your friends, your family members, your coworkers, to be sitting next with you on Sunday. All right, can you promise me to do that? Let's put down names. Brothers, sisters, spouses, friends, neighbors, Strangers, Daryl, I don't know. I love that I had a friend named Daryl. He was tall. He was so, so tall. It was great. I love tall friends anyway. Reminds me that I'm short. But as you take time to fill those out, it doesn't mean it'll be easy. Nothing for the disciples was just easy. Nothing. It was hard. Even in our journey, it wasn't until we finally got home with my parents' van that I realized that the axle was a bit broken <laughs> on the van. I just thought in Buffalo, there was icy roads everywhere so it was because it was so tropical up in New York, upstate New York. Things can be challenging. But every good purpose has challenges along the way. I believe that we get to be a group of people that God has chosen this church to usher people into the gates of heaven. What an awesome opportunity that is. All right, would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for the call that you've placed on upon all of our lives. The call that at least allows for us to honestly seek you and to know you and to share your love with amazing grace and peace. We pray right now for the, the names that are upon our hearts. For some of us, it's pretty quick. We've cried for these people. We've cried for our sons and daughters to know you. We've cried for our parents to know you. We've cried for our friends to know you. For others of us, it might be the first time that we're actually thinking about, man, it's time for me to invite someone to know who Jesus is. So, Lord, we just ask for your peace as we go through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at the branches, all who believe and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is welcome to come to the table and receive, uh, receive communion, which is the Lord's Supper for us, which allows for us to be reminded that our sins is not the end, but rather God's grace and forgiveness is greater that we are able to then set this moment aside in the life of our church to set, say, Lord, I want my hearts to be right and whole with you. 
And so as you come forward today and receive the body and blood of Christ, know that God is saying your old is gone and the new is ahead. There is no sin that is greater than the grace of Jesus. And that is a beautiful thing. So really quick, uh, turn to someone right around you and say, Jesus loves you. Can you do that really quick? And then say, Jesus forgives you. And then say it again, Jesus loves you. This is a good pattern and a good model for us to be reminded of in a good way. And look at that. You just shared the love of Jesus with a bunch of people. Ba-boom. Gotcha. Anyway, so you're very cool. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's pray over communion. So as we, oh, I didn't give this instruction. Sorry. As you come forward, we take it, and then we go back to our seats, and then we sit down. Or we don't We stay standing. We finish the song, and then we take communion together. Awesome. All right. So bring your cards forward, lay them down. If it's just one name, even if there's no name on it, lay it down. Because I know there's someone on your heart. Even if you're like, I don't want to do that, just take the blank card and lay it down, okay? Because I know that will represent someone. All right, would you pray with me? Uh, open your hands right now to receive. Lord, we ask for your blessing to fall down upon us. Lord, in this world, there can be many different things that can trouble our hearts. But Lord, you are the one who gives us peace and steadies us. And so, Lord, we ask that our shame or our, our sin or whatever, our anxiety, whatever it may be, Lord, we just lay it down. I don't want to don't want to carry it anymore. Don't want to don't want it to lead us anymore. But we lay it down. Jesus, you went to the cross for us in this moment and this time right now saying this you want to set us free so Lord we pray set us free make us right in your name we pray amen Simple heart singing high. 
body of Christ was broken for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ was shed for you and the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. O oh, holy God, you've moved in our hearts. moved in our souls. The challenges that are ahead of us, we want to have faith in a way where we know they are not as great when we are with you. And Lord, those moments in our lives where we're just wondering what is our purpose and our call, to know you. And so we come before you right now and just saying thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so as we go from this place, really quick, I'm just going to have you do a few things. Hold this for me. It's my chalice. Oh, what is that right? Anyway, all right, sorry. A few things. One, give someone a high five and say, I'm so glad you're here. Boom. See you next week. Awesome. Two, we now literally go get to be the light of Christ in this world. Like, we lit you are all glowing right now. Why you are. Especially you, Krista. That's my wife. Anyway. All right. Well, we are ready to go. If you are feeling weak or weary, the power of Christ is upon you. If you are feeling that I don't know if my heart can love some of these people the way you're asking me to, Lord, he will give you that love. If you're saying, I don't know if I'm worthy, he has already given you the grace. You are worthy. So let us go from this place being the light and love of Jesus and share that light and love with everyone that we come in contact with. 
And I just want to really quick, I know I'm starting to turn into this guy, but I know I'm this. But we have so many little kids running around here. And I, I, I wasn't going to do this. And, and bigger kids, too. Taller kids. And the taller, tall. yep, there we go. Evan's over there. Tall. And so uh, just really quick, we're just going to do a blessing over our kids because I just it's stirred in my heart through communion. So we're just going to pray for them, and then we're going to go. This is how we're going to start. Uh, kids, if there is a kid next to you, so there's like Levi right there, Jackson, right there, put your hands on them. I know they hang up around here, but put your hands on them or whatever. Uh, or around, yeah, there we go. Right. Lord, we thank you so much for all these 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 kids, the ones who are are here, and Lord, we just pray right upon them uh, that you just allow for them to know that they are yours. Lord, whatever they are facing, let them experience your peace and your grace. Let them know that they are loved by Jesus and fill them with your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thanks for doing that with me. Hey, see you next week. And just remember, two weeks, there's going to be a donkey here. Three weeks, there's going to be a big party here. So we're excited. Can't wait to see you guys. Have a blessed week. Thank you.